the July 6th, 2022 meeting of the Municipal Building Commission. Uh, no one is participating virtually, so we'll get to do voice votes. Oh, uh, so, but for the record, uh, Terry is here, Ed is here, Jackie's here, Gail's here, Jerry's here, Jay's here, and I'm here. So we do have a quorum. Uh, the uh, minutes of June 1st are not available, but the minutes of June 8th are. <laughs> Let's show us there a vote. Is there Move a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll table the June 1st minutes. Uh, we have next bills for gym floors uh, from Port and Socotech, but nothing from the contractor? No, so I guess I'll, I'll hop to that, that piece. Um, I talked with Mark Sawatsky earlier today. Um, the contractor anticipates starting and being on site Thursday or Friday of this week with full mobilization on Monday. Um, this is roughly a two week delay from their original schedule, which had them in the building on June 27th, uh, but they still anticipate finishing on time. The holdup has been the hazardous materials submittals, um, which have been submitted, reviewed and approved. Um, and now we're scheduling clean harbors to come on for the um, hazmat removal. So the contractor will be fully mobilized Monday and has committed that we're still on schedule. Okay, uh, and then those two bills are appropriate to pay? Yep, Mark reviewed the CBI Secretech one and I reviewed Mark's and they're, they're good to go. Is there a motion? Move to approve, second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. As long as you're talking, uh, Jeremy, why don't you talk about the City Hall envelope? Certainly, um, so as you know, Russo Barr did a um, envelope survey for the city. Um, which I shared with you all about $1.1 million worth of hard construction costs so that um, that's not in soft cost contingency design, anything like that. Um, we're pairing that with a report done by, I forget the name of the vendor, um, through a Green Communities grant last summer um, and our ADA transition plan done by the Institute for Human Centered Design. Um, and all three of those will serve as the basis of our project. So tomorrow the finance team and the mayor, uh, we're gonna have a meeting on how how we can fund this, how what, how big the scope we want to be, um, you know, what in the City Hall Annex do we want to include, you know, the ramp work that needs to be done in the City Hall Annex, do we want to do that as part of the project, not part of the project, do we want to include parking lot sorts of things in it. Um, so we're going to kind of try to right size what our budget can handle uh, debt service wise um, and then see what we can fit um, into that scope. Um, so that, that meeting's happening Thursday and hopefully we'll have some more uh, info for you in your August meeting. So this will be a project we will be undertaking? It will be assigned to the Municipal Building Commission, yep. And um, I, well, we have to put this back out for a designer RFQ or not? So it's over a million dollars, uh, hard construction projects, so we'll have an OPM for it as well. So we'll do that first. Okay. So we'll, go, we'll get an OPM. Yeah, and then the OPM will run the de designer RFQ, the general contractor, sealed bids, all of that. Okay. Um, all right, excellent. Um, joint public safety. So um, that meeting, <laughs> the police chief was on vacation, now the fire chief's on vacation, so that kickoff meeting has been scheduled for uh, a week from Tuesday uh, with the mayor, the chiefs, Jack and I, um, and we'll get uh, a timeline on that, um, kind of where KBA's heads at, that sort of thing. So we have an executed contract with KBA. Uh, we're moving forward. Uh, they have their PO and everything. So um, we'll have that kickoff in, in about a week and a half, and we can we can brief you at your next meeting as well. So that be July nineteenth. Is that what that is? I think so. That's a Tuesday. Week from yesterday. Yeah, two weeks from yesterday. And did you send an invite around? I believe there? I did. Yeah. I don't remember seeing it, but May have you been sent it very about recently. About an hour ago, yeah. All right, well, that's probably, I haven't seen it. Okay, good. All right. Uh, the Attleboro Pawtucket Water Interconnect. Matt, you want to come up? Courtney? Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Pitta. I'm with CDM Smith, the consultant on the project, and am the project manager. 
So, uh, Jeremy, why don't you just review? We had one bid. Yeah, we had one bid that was more than 100% of our budget, I believe, if I, if I recall correctly. 100% um, over our budget. Yes, yes. <coughs> um, so um, we, uh, this project's been going on since about 2016. Um, many of you have been involved in it. Um, so after we got the bids in, uh, Matt and I had a conversation, Jack as well, about what we can do either on existing scope to, to de-scope and get something um, within our allowable budget or somewhere close come up with alternate financing um, situations. The, um, as I'm sure Matt, um, I believe Matt explained to you last time he was here, or through, through the letter, um, that lead times um, are, are pretty wild on a number of things. Um, and a contractor you know, doesn't like a long contract period, it exposes it to too much, uh, too much volatility, and a short contract period, there's not enough time to get the stuff going on. Um, so we asked Matt to think about how we value engineer this, how we can move forward, what's suitable for the water department and the city within our budgetary constraints. Um, so he's here, to, he's here to update the committee on, on what he's thinking about. Sure. Um, the two things I was asked to speak to the most were probably VFDs and the story there with uh, their necessity for this project. And well, that was also one of the major expense items, is that correct? And the it's, lead time items? It's the lead time on the right. VFDs. Um, it, they, they have cost, and those costs, like everything else, have gone up. But the lead time has gone to like a year, roughly, is the type of quote that you get. Um, and as Jeremy mentioned, it's, it's that exposure over that period of time um, that we that drove away some bidders and certainly led to increased cost to cover risk uh, with the one bidder that we did have. First, I looked into the necessity of the VFDs, and I'd love to tell you that this pump station could operate without them, but what a variable frequency drive does simply is controls how fast the pump is operating and thereby controls the, the flow. Um, in this particular case where you're, you're taking water from Pawtucket that's available at like 90 to 110 PSI and sending it to a variable elevation, um, not having a VFD would essentially mean when you turn those pumps on, you could have a wide range of flows. Uh, we need to be able to kind of lock that in. I know that there are other locations, older facilities in the city that don't have VFDs to control their pumps. and. I think that there are probably some flow control issues associated with that. So a VFD is necessary. Um, we could go with, frankly, uh, a less complex VFD and save some money. Um, there are other VE changes associated with the pumps and the pump station itself that we could probably, you know, feel you might have a savings of about 100000 to 120000 Certainly not making up the difference between um, what was previously carried or anticipated and what we received yeah, for the so bid. So just to remind everybody, what was the, the, the only bid? How much was it? Uh, 3806412 somewhere 3 in there. 3.8. 3.8. And our budget was? 1.9. So 100%. Um, so, so I guess if you're saying that we need to stick with what we have, then how do we get around the problem of the fact that nobody wants to bid on it? Um, one of the things that the city could look into, there are pros and cons of course, would be pre-purchase of the pump station. So the other component that I was asked to, to dig into in advance of this was how much that pump station was quoted for uh, to the contractor. The pump station itself is pre-manufactured, so it a, a year plus from, from bidding or from signing of an agreement. So it's, so it's, it would made, it's made in a factory and shipped out? Yes. Is there assembly on site or is it The connections would be obviously made on site to the, the Pawtucket system and the Attleboro system. Um, that pump station, the quote that the manufacturer gave to whomever would ask was 1.4 million. So, you know, that does represent the majority of the cost. Our expectation for the remainder of the cost was roughly 500,000, 600,000. That includes markup on the pump station by a GC. Uh, and you know there is work to be done to make those connections, ready the site, et cetera. Um, I guess what I would say, one avenue that the city could look into to control and cost would be to pre-purchase that pump station. Um, you would own it and then could bid at that time uh, installation of the pump station. 
that would eliminate a lot of the risk that uh, Jeremy and I have both spoken to tonight. Um, the, the timeline there and the contractor sitting there saying, I don't know what the cost for the ductile iron pipe and everything else is going to be. So there are pros associated with pre-procurement. One of the cons that I would point out, and this is something to be weighed, comes in the form of like warranty acceptance and commissioning and those types of things. The GC that's installing it doesn't necessarily, suddenly they don't own the pump station for a year, those types of things. But those are problems that we could get past uh, traditionally and realistically potentially see a savings to the city overall for installation costs. Um, so I'm not sure I'm following what you just said. One option would be that the city purchases the pump station themselves and then bids out the installation. A year later. A year later. When we um, know from the manufacturer that it's ready to be delivered within 90 days or something? Exactly. As we're coming up on that date and, you know, frankly, as the VFDs become available and get installed within the pump station and it's tested on site, that's when we could could bid this and the change to our bid documents would be something along the lines of you know you take the pump station component out you describe it and then you say you shall install pump station as you just that gotta, you just gotta do the site work and connect it that's correct and is do we anticipate that that site work is over two million dollars no so how did we get from <laughs> 1. 1. 4 to 3.8 well, I can't speak to 1.4. Oh, the 1.4 for the pump station. Um, we, CM Smith, anticipated that that site work markup on the pump station, et cetera, would probably be in the neighborhood of 1.5 itself. Um, the, the difference between our expectations, basically the $800,000, we believe was in the risk and in the contractor feeling that they might be the only ones to bid. Um, so you might as well bid a big enough number so that yeah. you know, I mean, no matter what happens, we won't be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. We've had successful subsequent to that bid openings where we've had a couple of strong bids and one wild card that's much higher. A lot of times what we find is that contractor's hoping that no one else bids and they're essentially your only choice if you want to make that choice. So let's turn to the water department. How much taste for risk do you have? <laughs> How do you mean? <laughs> well, I say you have enough money available since we had 1.9. That's including our contingency. Wouldn't the manufacturer uh, warranty the pump station for a year's time? The manufacturer would warranty the pump station for a year's time where there would potentially be issues is oh, that issue came up during installation, those types of things. It's not something that I think we wouldn't be able to work through. Um, it's certainly been done before, will be done again. Um, I just, in terms of solutions, I just wanted to point out that that's not necessarily a silver bullet that doesn't carry with it at least some complications. But yes, we could require, it could drive cost up, you could require a five-year warranty or you know, the standard is one year, of course. Um, that would be the difference there is well would it sounds like though the issue is is it one year from when they deliver it or one year from when it goes online so would we want to buy an 18 month warranty then as a way of dealing with that that's one option yeah it's going to drive cost a little bit it, this avenue it would drive up cost a little bit on the pump station itself uh, and you know, they, we'd want to make sure that they're there, the manufacturer, to warrant proper installation so that everybody owns their piece of the warranties. And uh, Ed? Yeah, I just had a question. Uh, pump station, is that a, a standard configuration of a certain number of components? If so, what components make up? Is it a standard thing or is it something that's unique for every job? Well, I'd say there's a general arrangement that's going to be similar, you know, suction pumps, uh, discharge with a meter uh, in, in the connection. This pump station in particular, there were testing requirements, I believe, put in place by DEP. So if you're going to use it, you have to test the water that's going into the system, particularly not just because it's IMA, but it's interstate. Um, so that created some complications. What's unique about any one pump station and what we focus on as a starting point are the pumps themselves. 
So what are the demands, uh, both in terms of flow and uh, what a pump does is put energy into water or a fluid. Um, so how much energy is necessary? And that's actually, that amount of energy varies on this project enough that warrants the VFD. If we were pumping from, you know, a, a reservoir with a relatively fixed elevation, a variance of two to three feet, and we were discharging to a tank, we could live with some variation in flow associated with the amount of energy that needs to be put in and the pump consistently operating at 100% of that energy. In this case, there's just wide variations. I mean, the, the Pawtucket system itself has a differentiation 110 to 90 PSI, which equates to, what, seven feet ahead, plus or minus. Um, that's where you're gonna start to see wide flows. But getting back to your question, it's not a, the pump station isn't a particularly exotic arrangement. It's, they come in all shapes and sizes, but it's relatively standard. Now, does that require its own building? It does. Um, but the building is the pump station, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's a it's pre of it. it's a pre manufactured building with everything inside it that gets comes here on a tractor trailer or, or more than one. And yes, this is um, this would be a uniform of monolithic structure that's delivered, essentially ready for hookup. So the pumps are included, the VFDs, the meters, the sampling ports. Um, Approximately, what is the Footprint size. Oh. Um, obviously, I asked that you not quote me on this, but uh, off the top of my head, probably about 16 by 28 in this case. Um, it's not, there are, there are bigger pump stations and there are smaller pump stations. Um, so, how many manufacturers would make a pump station like this if we put it out to bid just to buy the pump station? Would there, how many manufacturers are there? It's, it's an open market. I, I'd say that you could have interest from three plus or minus manufacturers on this particular pump station. Which is what you normally want for a bidding environment. So I, uh, I take as many as we can every time. Right. But so, so I guess going back to what I was trying to ask Courtney, it appears we have enough money now in the budget that we could put out to bid just the pump station itself. Just for the pump station, yes. And then when we had a bid for that, which said I'll deliver it in 14 months, <laughs> we would then have enough time to go back to the city council and ask them, actually we could probably just put it out to bid some period of time when we knew what the delivery date was likely to be. So we could put it out to bid 120, 150 days before, the, um, before we knew what was gonna arrive. And we could then get a bid and go back to the council and ask them for the actual amount of money that we needed at that point, right? I would reverse the order. I wouldn't want to spend 1.5 million of our 1.9 million we have available on a pump station execute that contract and then go to city council and say could we get some more money for the rest of it well because they feel that they we gave we them no choice yeah we, um, because we, we, we just spent a half one and a half million dollars on a pump station that has but to unless go unless they give us the rest you know? we it, it's, it's gonna sit shed, there yeah. now would um, it be any cheaper to stick build it in, in place no part of the reason that we went with a pre-manufactured pump station is that's generally more cost effective yeah. mm -hmm. nowadays pre-manufacturing it's not always the most aesthetically pleasing thing that you get. Sometimes it is. Um, this one is no frills, certainly, especially based on its location. What does it look like, a shipping container? Yeah. yeah. And it's in the corner of an industrial area. Yeah. Does it require heating in the winter? Yes. That's a, yeah, I, sorry that I'm stumbling with that. Yeah, you need to, you need to have a minimal heat, something like 50 degrees. A lot of that is Keep actually the water from freezing, right? Yeah. I'm sorry? Keep the water from freezing. Yeah, Yeah. You, we would be able to, to back drain the, the water when it's not being used. But yeah, you, you're exposing the water system. And then, as I said, irrespective of that, um, these spaces need to be operable, which I believe is 50 degrees so that right. things don't freeze. You know, that's... We also have, um, we, we're responsible for chemical addition um, per DEP. 
um, for a corrosion inhibitor and a hydroxide, and hydroxides like to freeze and crystallize under 50 degrees. So it doesn't have to be hot, it's just got to be bearable. So if we were to go down to the city council now, how much money should we be asking for? What, what should our new budget be? Should it be 3.8? Should it be 3? Should it be 4? I mean, do you have an idea as to how much money we should ask for, understanding that it's okay if we don't spend it all? The one thing that we know is we got one bid for 3.8. I mean, and nothing is going to be cheaper. Nothing. Right. The curve is only going up as we're all aware of. So should we should we ask the council to borrow four million dollars to cover borrowing costs, uh, and then maybe bid it separately as you're describing, but but get enough money up front from the council. Is that what you were thinking, Jeremy? Yeah, and um, so this bond authorization was part of a series of projects, and we've already borrowed quite a bit of it. Um, so I would look at our top line numbers, four million the most we're willing to spend on this project, what do we have already borrowed, what other projects have we borrowed and closed out into this fund, and then what additional do we need? So really, we would probably need to go to council for an additional, I don't know, million and a half dollars or two million dollars. But we want to be upfront that the cost of the project could be four million. Right. And I, so it I might, would, might be less if we get, the, you know, if we eliminate this risk factor for the contractor. If we can eliminate the scary word, if we can mitigate this potential risk issue, um, it could be less. Now we're also talking about time. So a year from now, well, I, I don't know what the bid no, environment is no, going to be. We understand entirely what you're saying. We're right. not you trying to pin you down as, uh, on that. <laughs> yeah. But what we're trying to do is figure out how to get this project done. And so it sounds well, to me like... Well, we pin down the price of the building yeah. by putting it out to bid now. Yeah, you take... So that would lock in half of the cost. I was going to say, you take right. approximately half of the cost and lock it in. So your your total risk, you know... Your risk analysis would suggest that you're better off. Just as everybody here is aware, we don't know what a year from now the bid environment for the rest of the work is going to be, but we have eliminated a portion of that risk. Yes. Because two years from now, the pump station might be, just from the manufacturer, might be 1.7 instead of 1.4. Right. Yeah. You know. um, and yet, something to keep in mind too that we got one bid for this whole project. You know, you're talking about three plus or minus for the manufacturer bids. Um, then we have to think about what's the bid environment look like for the installation and how long are we going to be stuck with this, this shed, uh, this one and a half million dollar shed without being able to tie it in. Um, so I, um, I think we have a little more work, staff work to do to figure out what that environment looks like too. Isn't it, is it reasonable um, to expect that we can procure uh, the installation piece timely? Ed? Um, how many, once say we purchase that pump station, how many companies are qualified to install it? That's kind of what I was getting at, that we don't quite, at least right now, it's, it's, tough, it's tough to say. Well, actually, if, if you're taking away the cost of the pump station, smaller contractors can bid on it now because they don't have to have the bonding capacity to buy the pump station as well, right? That's true, yes. I. I don't know how much more that opens us up to the, the, you know, we bid a lot of projects with the city in this range. Uh, to answer Ed's question, off the top of my head, in a great environment, I'd expect five to six people to have interest in this. The total qualified is much larger, but people that might actually bid it, you know, on a good project at a good time, we might have five bidders on something like this. It also depends, for instance, if you're bidding something in January for the work to do in May, you usually get a better bidding environment than if you bid it now. Oh, <laughs> you don't want to bid in July if you don't have to, yeah. Right. Um, because the contractors year. are trying to line up their work for the right. spring and figure out what their year is going to look like, you usually get you a better bidding environment. Uh, absolutely true. I, I'd always prefer January, February, if you could, if every project could be picked that way. So if we were to ask the city council for some money 
figuring that we could put this back out for pump station only maybe in September and figure on a 15 month delivery period, would that get us where we want to be? Or would we wait to put it out to bid until later in the fall so that it would be delivered in the spring of a year and a half later? I mean, we'd have to figure out the timing here, right? Yeah, and I'd want to go back to the manufacturers and say, you know, as of today, what's your quote? Because when we were coming up on the bid date here, I'd say, you know, we checked in in December and it was, let's say, nine months and by March or April, it was 14 months or something along those lines. So I wouldn't want to try to map it all out tonight, but you're right, it's it's part of the exercise that we need to look into. If you, if the city wants to go the route of purchasing this pump station on their own, we'd want to think about exactly when we're going to get it and then back up how far in advance we'd want to bid the installation work and try to make that happen in, you know, over winter, early, early within a calendar year. Yeah, so if we just, as an example, said we want this work to, we want this pump station to be installed, God, this sounds terrible, in the spring of 24, is that what we're looking at? Yes. Yeah. And then we'd have to do our timeline back from there and figure out what the lead time is on the pump station and figure out when to put the pump station out to bid then, right? Yes, and I'm trying to do that math in my head based on what we know right now. Spring 2024. It would be this fall. It would be this fall. The, the later end of fall we could live with, but it would be this fall, yes. That we would put out the pump station itself to bid, which would give us enough time to get something to the council would we be able to get something to the council for the uh, july meeting or is that too ambitious Jeremy? uh yeah definitely at the july meeting we need bond council involved we need a finance committee meeting uh the august meeting is possible uh but i'm just saying for the mayor to send something down yeah we need we need bond council we need our financial advisor we need a green light letter from bond councils and that takes you know a, a month sometimes so if we so if it went down in August, there'd be a public hearing in September, and maybe this would be voted in October or and November? And then we can't sign a purchase order until 30 days after the vote. Right. But we could put it out to bid. Yeah. So, therefore, it seems like our time frame is getting a little compressed here. <laughs> yeah. Well, is that correct? <laughs> amazingly so, yeah. Um, for, for a spring of 24 project, which you know will only be eight years after we started this. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess, is that the sense of the commission that we should proceed in this fashion? When you put this out to bid, can you put down a shorter delivery time? Instead of leaving it up to them saying, okay, they're saying 14 months, you're saying we want it in a year. Oh, that's... No. I'm sorry. Not actually the way lead times are going right now. Um, if they're saying 14 months, I'd be. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, they're probably cutting it tight. I think the problem. And that's what we're seeing internally, if, too. If we tell them that their time for delivery is 15 months or 12 months, if we, if that. If they're saying, okay, you're going to move up in the in the pecking order, they're going to charge us more for moving mm -hmm. up, right? Yeah. yeah, and there's only so, I mean, there's only so much that we'd be able to, quote, unquote, buy by, by saying. So I guess that's what I was saying. We would want to go back to the manufacturers and get the timeline as of today. And then in that contract, there would naturally, I mean, we tie them to a date. But we can't mm -hmm. just say, and it has to be within a year, because we might face a no bid environment for that. So it would have we, to be something that's we, realistic. If we put it out to bid in November and we open bids in December and we ask for 15 months, that gets us to March or April for the for the delivery, which is what we're looking for, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess my only hesitation is make sure that 15 months is doable for these guys right now before we... And so you're going to find that out tomorrow? Uh, the, the lead guy is on... The go-by that we use for this from EDI is in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, for the next week. But I'm going to find it out on, what, the 11th uh, when he gets back. Okay. And I'll talk to other manufacturers, of course. But the go-by that we used on this particular project is not available right now. 
Okay. I, I guess we would like to be able to have the mayor send, if the mayor agrees, of course, and the finance team agrees, be in a position to send something to the council to start the process in August. And so if you can have the information, uh, you know, by the 1st of August, uh, help us come up with a timeline, mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be, uh, sounds like that's the way to go. Well, I'm going to email them from the parking lot. I just don't know when I'm going to get a response. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you don't forget. Like, you know, <laughs> that's the best way to do it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that's why I go upstairs after these meetings. <laughs> yeah, that's time. comfortable with that? Yeah. What about a uh, site prep? Does that thing just sit on a level pad or does it sit on concrete or what? Uh, it's a concrete pad. Um, I don't think that... I mean, do we have could, to have I know you're, where you're going is could you time it up, get the work, start the contract a little earlier before we actually have... There are things that could be done, but one of the things that we looked into in terms of what happened with the previous bid, there's not a ton of site prep work to be done at this particular project. You, get a, you can prep some of the piping tie-ins and you can level the pad, but there's not as much to be done until the... I mean, is there an area over there to take delivery of that building? And oh, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. It's, it's not a huge site by any means, but yes, uh, okay. you, could, you could store it on site. But there's some prep work that could be done before, the, before it arrives, but not, not an extra, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't do 90% of the work on site before you get the pump station. All right, so Matt and I have some work to do on this to figure out its feasibility, and then once we know something, you guys will know something. Everybody agree? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate both. it. And Thank you. Thank by you. the way, good luck with the school guys. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. School's not an issue. <laughs> no, this is. All right. That's been easier than this project, man. I yes. was just going to say. <laughs> kind of where we were Actually, at. Actually, the school started after this project. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Appreciate the time. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Courtney and, and Matt. All right. And now for the feature of the evening. Melissa, come on up. Oh my gosh. I didn't expect that to speak here tonight. Well, I'm not sure you have to speak, but uh, so we put out on the street the feasibility study for the Council on Aging, and we got four bids. Uh, we like to interview three if we can, but as we did with the public safety building where we got four, the path of least resistance was to interview all four and not spend a couple hours tonight trying to cut one of them. <laughs> uh, and in my experience, and I think in this commission's experience, if we interview all four, two of them will talk themselves out of it, and then we'll have a choice of the, the top two uh, mm -hmm. once we do the interview process. So uh, is there What's the feeling of the commission? Should we spend a lot of time tonight leaving out one, or should we just interview all four? All four. I think four, it, from my perspective, uh, the person doesn't have a vote, but I think four, four is the line. I think once you start to, if we had five, it would make sense to cut it down, or if we had one serious outlier that we yeah. didn't think could handle the job, which I don't think is the case. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think four is a, a, a fine approach. So, if we're going to do that, typically we would schedule the interviews on a Wednesday night, uh, and the 20th and the 27th look like candidates. So uh, speak now, group. When would you like to do this? 20th is fine with me. Yeah, 20th. Okay with me. I can't do the 20th, but that's... Oh. How's the 27th look? That's fine. Whatever works. Is that okay with the rest of the group? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay with you? Works for me. 27th. Okay. How about you, Ty? Uh, I'm trying to remember the date the city council meets. I think it's early. Well, this will be a Wednesday, not a Tuesday yeah, anyway. No problem. Okay. Uh, so, uh, do you think that any of your board members would like to be part of the process? Absolutely. So uh, 
do you have the books electronically? I do. And do you want to distribute those to your board members? I've already forwarded them, yeah. Okay. Yep. So the way we've done things in the past is that only us get to officially vote, but we always take the opinions and how they would vote of those who are really, really interested. So we would like to extend that opportunity uh, to that group on the 27th to uh, um, listen Great. and share their opinions. Great. Um, and uh, you know, it's the start of a, of a basically a year-long process. Um, so um, sounds like the 27th is the night. Jeremy will draw straws and choose the order in which we'll interview all four. Mm -hmm. The interviews will be here in this room. Uh, we schedule them how far apart? 35 minutes or so? Yeah, um, so we give them 30 minute slot, build in five minutes in between. Um, that seemed to work last time. We finished pretty much on time, so I'll do the same thing again. So we'll start at 5.30. That will be the only thing on the agenda unless we're approving the minutes of June 1st. <laughs> Jeremy finds them. <laughs> if I redo them. You may have to watch the AACS telecast to <laughs> make some minutes. <laughs> um, so uh, the 27th will be the interview process. Uh, that night we will then rank them one, two, three, and four. The process is that whoever we choose as number one, we then solicit a price proposal from them. If we can negotiate a price that fits within our budget, which is 125? 125. 125. Uh, then we recommend to the mayor signing a contract with that group. That group will then spend the better part of a year figuring out what it is that a council on aging should look like and then once you know that where it could be located and then once you've done those two things then the question of what is the likely cost that will then have to be factored in with a number of other things uh, I believe that the City Council is going to expand the jurisdiction of the Municipal Building Commission and give us the authority to engage in a long-term planning process, a 20-year horizon. We will need some money from the mayor to hire somebody to do that. But the idea is that we will do a, a survey of every building the city owns. We will come up with a long-term maintenance program, what needs to be done to each building and how long over the 20-year time frame. So, I mean, obviously, the HVAC system at the library hopefully won't have to be replaced within that time frame. Uh, but we know that there are envelope repairs needed to this building. There may be other things needed for this. We, we just need to, to know that. And then we have to figure out how to feather into that a public safety building and a council on aging building and come up with a 20-year horizon that the city can hopefully then start to execute. Uh, so uh, that will be our, our expanded scope of work mm -hmm. because uh, we like to keep busy. <laughs> so uh, with all of that in mind, um, anybody have anything else that they need to bring up or have we covered the agenda, Jeremy? And that's everything on my agenda. All right. Then um, thank you for appearing. Thank you, Ty. Thank you. Uh, don't recognize the gentleman in the back. Joe Murphy. Okay, are you having a hearing tonight relative to that 20-year um, survey as such? No. The city council has not yet passed that to give us that jurisdiction. Once they do, the mayor then would have to give us a funding source to go out and to hire somebody to actually do that survey with us being the overseers 
and then um, jointly with that person we will write a, a plan that we can present to the council so all right then uh, we'll see you all next week virtually for the school we will see you on August 16th for the ribbon cutting for the school we will see you on August 17th for the school meeting in the school. We will see you on the 27th for the Council on Aging. And we'll see you on August 3rd for the next meeting of this group, um, the next regular meeting of this group. So, we'll have a fun summer. <laughs> So with that Plan. being said, um, is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned at 611.